Ooh. Ooh, that's my vibe. And I'm hearing myself, so I know I'm doing the goods. Sweet. Cool. Great stuff. Everything looks all good, and my mic is nearly falling off. That's okay. Sure. Alright, here I go. Ready, steady, spaghetti. That was a weak clap compared to previous weeks. Hello everyone, welcome to the stream, welcome to the Beandow Show. My name is Beandow. You may remember me from this channel. Uh, today is the 8th of November, 2021. It is the second week of... Uh, what month is it? November. Yes, that's the month. Nah, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I hope you're having a great November. If everything's going your way, then cool. And everything's not going your way, then not cool. But that's okay, because things may go your way someday. And that's always something eventual. That is something along for, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, this stream is a return to form. It is a return to tradition. And in this case, I'm jumping right back into this game, Pokemon Gold. Uh, for those of you who have been looking at my channel, uh, or, or my Twitch channel, you may have seen me play this Muppet game and this Tomb Raider game. Uh, that is because I would played through the first half of this game, where you basically you get eight badges and you beat the league, like any Pokemon game. But what Pokemon Gold offers as a new thing, is a whole second half of the adventure. Maybe it's not quite as long as the original. Uh, I don't have my daylight savings turned on, so let's have... Let's go back in... Oh! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Hello! Bina! I have something here for you! Could you swipe up my line? See you later! I don't know why he's saying that in a hurry, but sure. It's the fast text speed. Anyway, we gotta talk to the mum. And tell her, hi, welcome home. You're trying very hard, I see. I've kept your room tidy. Or is this about your money? No! You wanna switch to daylight savings? Yes! I set the clock forward by one hour. Just do what you can. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Good evening, it's me, Ralph Gutter, man. How are you, Pokemon, doing? My going's really energetic, and it's a handful. Hey, listen, I almost caught Mareep the other day. You're a fisher. How'd you manage to get Mareep? Magic. Who knows? Who knows? So, yeah, Pokemon Gold is the only Pokemon game so far that extends the main experience beyond the eight badges. Uh... No, actually, that's not, that's not an accurate claim. It extends the amount of badges you'll get. How about, let's just do that. So let's... Uh, re resume the adventure, basically. Uh, you know, there you are. I called because I have something for you. See? It's an SS ticket. Ah. You know, the special... Nah. You know, you can catch Pokemon in Kanta. Oh, cool. Okay. The ship departs from Olivine City. But you knew that already, Bando. After all, you've traveled all over with your Pokemon. Give my regards to Professor Oak and Kanto. And away we go. Now, uh, this is a little bit awkward because I don't think I've got a flyer. So I'm going to have to run to the next city, which is not that far, but I'm probably going to get at least two wild encounters on the way. <laughs> which is just going to eat some time. But yeah, this Pokemon game does not just end once you beat the league. Unlike the last Pokemon game, except uh, I did one bonus video on Pokemon Blue, so <laughs> there is that. Um, but in that, you'd just catch Mewtwo and away you'd go. Uh, in this game, there's at least a sizable extra component where you get to explore new places that you've never been to before if you count just this game and not the last one. Uh, but they're changed. Then there's new Pokemon to catch, and there's, uh, new... Ah, uh, three wild encounters, dang it. Uh, there, there's, you know... It's a real treat. I guess it's one thing where it's like... If you think that 20-something hours for the main game experience is too short... Then, yeah, you're probably going, okay, well, sure, okay. And, you know, compared to other Pokemon games, there's a bit less, um... Training. There's a bit less, like, you have to... Uh, who's the highest level? As much as I love Quagsire... Yeah, no, he's he's gotten a bit too much love, so... I think I only need to fly. I don't need to do anything else for the moment, so... Uh, we're just gonna get the... Flashfly. The Flashfly, just the... It. You know? 
the true gender neutral pronoun right there. Um, so yeah, let's head over to Olivine City. There we go. Uh, and, but, oh well, yeah, this game, I think it probably has the largest post-game out of any Pokemon game. And I, I say that real seriously, because, yeah, I don't think any other Pokemon game really takes its post-game that seriously. I, I absolutely love when, uh, when an RPG, or really when any game, treats its post-game very importantly. And, uh, I think this came at, like, this perfect era, where games like Chrono Trigger did exist. Please get on board. Uh, forces you on board. Here we go! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, hi. Whoa! Excuse me, son, I was in a hurry. My granddaughter is missing. She's just a wee... girl. If you see her, please let me know. You know. And there he goes. Uh, so, yeah, um... There's a couple of trainers on board. So you know what that means. Fighting every single trainer, why not? Uh, who do I go... At the lead of my party. I still got Hot Doggo here, and he's still winging the uh, experience share, isn't he? Oh, he's got the charcoal. Okay, who's got the experience share? Maybe no one has the experience share. Uh, but yeah, no. I I hope you guys will enjoy this uh, this post game. Must have boxed it. I must have gave it a quack sir. Across, it? Okay. Yeah, I worry that hot dog is gonna get like really cold out. Yeah. So how about we we'll we'll go for this? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be good getting back in into this game. Just uh, the the run of it. It's been <laughs> it's been a bit. Uh, but yeah, I I just didn't want to play like Pokemon. Uh. As constantly as I did. That was 11 streams in a row. Are you alone? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> that was 11 streams in a row and I'm like, uh, okay, I do one stream a week. 11 weeks is nearly three months. So, I was like, yeah, let's, let's do something else for a bit. I played through two games. And now, it's ready to return to form and to finish this game. Truly. Uh, the aim is to beat Red. I'll call it there. Because I think that that will be a good, like... I guess, a bit of room to, to try and do as much as possible. And there's definitely a fair bit to do in this post game, so it's not going to take just one stream, it's going to be at least a handful. Um, I think I said in the last stream that it's like, yeah, it's definitely at least six. Depends how long I take. Um, other than that though, yeah, it's it's more of what we're doing, but you're going to be, we're going to be seeing Pokemon that uh, just didn't come up in the main experience. And that'll be an exciting part. Um, just kind of, yeah, trying to figure out what, you know, find new Pokemon, get some new strats as well, because that's another thing about this post game is that you're really expected to, to go out, to, to go at it, to, uh, you know, get your Pokemon much higher level. Uh, I, I think there was a certain degree of, like, what's going on because, uh, here I am using a Growlithe and there's no Fire Stones in the half of the game that I've already played. So, <laughs> Growlithe there couldn't evolve. And on top of that, there's one singular Fire Stone. I can't get more. Here's your cabin. If your Pokemon are hurt, take a nap in the bed. That will heal them. So good on him for that. And there's even a PC. I don't really need Quaxo in my party. <laughs> I don't think there's any need. Uh. Yeah, there's a, there's a handful of trainers. Uh, I don't think there's really anything, like, too of note on the ship. Just, you're going to be fighting quite a few trainers if you try and look in every single door. But sure, I'm going to Kano to put on fire breathing shows. Fire breathing? Yum! Oh, Lyle. Oh, that's a good reminder that the new uh, Animal Crossing DLC is out, and I don't know that much about it, apart from it's got, um, uh, like an upside-down pentagram floor tile, and, uh, or, or, like, carpet, and you can peer at people out of your, your the little hidey hole in your door. <laughs> that's all I know. I know that you're supposed to be doing some, like, happy home designing stuff, 
but that's all I know. Um, and I guess, yeah, this is a this is an interesting time for me playing some video games because uh, tomorrow, in fact, at like 2 a.m. Uh, although I'm I'm just gonna play it when I wake up <laughs> normally, uh, is the uh, more official release of Forza Horizon 5, and this is. This game is one that it's like, I've been mildly anticipating. I've kind of known I'm gonna be playing it day one because I can, oh, I can just get the Xbox Game Pass and for a dollar I can play the game for a few months and I'll probably be set for playing the game for that amount of time. I don't need to play it for that much longer. Um, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. I have been playing uh, Motorsport 7 for a, a ridiculous amount of time, so maybe, maybe, who knows. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, Informally came out as an early access, just kind of pre-order release on the 5th, which was Thursday. And it's going to get a proper release on, or maybe it was Friday. And it's going to get a proper release on Tuesday, so everyone else, including the Xbox Game Pass people, can play it by then. Uh, I've got some still questions on making season passes and selling deluxe content, and especially when you sell a deluxe edition of your game, only to then add the, the, this early access thing as, uh, as a feature. <laughs> Telebird Sprite is so odd in this game. He's giving you a wave! Hi there! And he's dead, because he's flying type. <laughs> he's got bird in the name. You gotta, you gotta know that. Uh, but I think the most interesting part of Forza Horizon 5, for people who don't care about Forza Horizon 5, and I guess, yeah, you probably, like, if you don't care about it, sure, that's, that's fine. But what you probably should care about is that, like, how much have you heard of this game? And then, how much have you heard of the recent Call of Duty? Because to me, like, maybe, maybe I'm more out of the loop than the average person, but I did not realize that Call of Duty came out the same Friday. Last Friday. Three days ago. That's... It, absolutely baffling because I know that there's the new Battlefield which got delayed and it's I think it's coming out this month Vampy's brown type so let's uh, let's switch off that um wow hot dog is taking his time let's get Herc out Vampy. by the way notice how all the Pokemon are like level 30 there's a there's a strange like difficulty just like kink in this game where it tends towards that why did I use counter but... okay sure um, yeah, there's a strange difficulty bump in this game when it gets to that Elite Four and then suddenly it's gone. It just kind of tends back and suddenly I'm now fighting level... Mm. Actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. That, uh, oh, maybe. <laughs> it's a mixture of level 30s and level 40s. Maybe they'll tend towards level 50 by the later parts of the game. Uh, but who knows. Oh no, we lost! That's what you get for teaming up on me, I guess. Sure. I love how you've got all these rooms. Hey son, I can't seem to find my granddaughter. She's on the ship, that's okay, but where she fell overboard? She's an energetic child, so she may be bugging someone. I'm worried. Oh gosh. Dude, not one thing that's worse is your child embarrassing you and not, not just falling off the ship. Look at this reused lighthouse here. Oh, I, I, you could... Hey, guy, could I get you to look for my buddy? He's goofing off somewhere, that lazy bum. I want to go find him, but I'm on duty right now. Wow. Cool. Is he just going to be in, like, one of these rooms that I've already gone into? I can't believe he's done this to me. The ship is actually, like, it's very reminiscent just of the designs of the... Well, actually, I was going to say, it's very reminiscent of the ship from the first Pokemon game, and then it's like, yeah, you know, the same ship. Uh, also, I just saw, I saw a guy, and then I just completely blanked out. Hold on. Hi. Yeah, I'm a sailor, right? I wasn't goofing off. This cabin was vacant, so I just took a quick nap. There's two beds in there. Sure. Okay. He's coming at me. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, Call of Duty just being, uh, in my eyes, overshadowed by 
It's, it's not quite an annual racing franchise. In fact, there's not a ton of racing franchises that are annual, but it's definitely like one where it's like, Forza is definitely a safe franchise. What they're doing in this new one is like, oh, it's, it's the last one, but a bit more. And, you know, there's nothing really wrong with that. Um, but yeah, like the few things I have heard of Call of Duty Vanguard, it's mostly people making fun of the weapons because uh, they're very big period nuts uh, and they, they really like, you know, period accurate weapons. So when they see stuff like uh, bolt action rifles shooting at a certain speed without drawing, they're like, ooh, what's going on there? So, you know, they're, they're fair criticisms, but I guess it's more that it's like, if that's the only bit of Call of Duty that I'm really hearing of, then man, you know, like, how did Forza become the game? Being a sailor, I have to do physical labor. It's exhausting. You know. Cool. Okay. <laughs> How about let's do a heal? I was gonna say it's free, but I mean, it's always free. And then you start hearing the Russian national anthem playing. Uh, but yeah. Other than that, though, I am excited to, to play the game. I've, I've actually got a, a bunch of friends who are willing to play the game day one on on the game pass. <laughs> Uh, and and I, I'd probably say that's actually the greatest part of this Xbox Game Pass. In the same way that I think that's one of the best parts of um, uh, when people experience things on Netflix or other streaming services. It's this idea of, you know, everyone has that same line of services. And as long as the barrier to entry beyond that initial point is not actually that high. Um, and in this case, it's literally just the bandwidth to download the game. and. You're a, you're a caring of a of a of a driving game, um, you know. Like I, I guess there's a lot of uh, say shows on Netflix where it's like y your friend watches it and then you're like, oh, I'll watch it, and then you literally just watch it. You don't have to wait until it's like, oh, the next time I go to the store and oh, maybe I've been saving my money for something else. It's like you're you're all on the same you know subscription service. You can all get into that. That's actually one real nice thing about uh, these things as a service uh even if even if i've got uh, quite a few questions on other things being able to like support these day one releases a bit better than well actually games do a pretty good job of encouraging people i'm gonna look in the bin holy crap he was drive heaving that's the worst kind of heaving dude if i'm sick i i swear i am like I'm real bad at like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm real bad at doing wet ones, you know what I mean, it's just like, wet, when, when your heaving is not dry, like, it's real disorienting, but then you totally like, sort yourself out. When you're not getting anything out, you just sit with it. So you don't feel the absolute worst, but you definitely feel longer, not great. So I'm a big fan of getting it out of the way and calling it a day. When you're sick. But I can't, you, I, I don't know how you control it. Is there, is there etiquette? Is there like a skill? Can you develop the ability to um, relieve your stomach in various different ways? Who knows? But, oh well. I've actually, that's been a weird one as well. Like me growing up, I've never felt too bad about motion sickness or, or really anything. And I guess like, you know, the, the upbringing of, I'm looking at too many video games, it's very hard for me to get too di disoriented. Um, I know exactly who that is, so I'm going to walk past them. Or is it? Wait, hold on, I got baited. I got baited, hold on, hi there. I'm so bored, wanna battle? <laughs> yeah, okay. Debra, Debora. They go to Seeking. Duh. But yeah, yeah, notice how every single... I mean, this is a trainer with one Pokemon, and it's level 33. We had to fight level 50, like, Dragonite, at the end of the game, just then. So, yeah, I'm not too sure what's with the difficulty in this one bit. Uh, it's also not even encouraging, like, you to use a different party. They kind of do just encourage you to keep using your same party, so... Uh, yeah, I, I don't quite know, but you know what? It's a post game. I don't care. If it's fun, it's fun. And that's the best part, is that this is a continued adventure. Captain, play with me, please. I'm bored. I want to play more. 
Hi, will you play with me? Oh, Grandpa's worried about me? I have to go. I have to go find Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa, here I am. I was playing with the captain and this guy. You know, was it? I heard you entertained my granddaughter. Uh, I want to thank you for that. I know. I'd like you to have this. He gives you the metal coat, which is actually kind of a cool item. I think it uh, strengthens your steel attacks, so that's cool. Fast ship SS Aqua has arrived in Vermilion City. We're traveling around the world. I had lots of fun playing. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's the boat part. It's a lot shorter than uh, you may expect. Anyway, let's just go over here. Fast ship SS Aqua has arrived in Vermilion City. I don't believe there's any hidden goodies. So, sorry, you can't board now. So this is one... <laughs> great thing I love about this game as well is like this idea of like you know this whole another world the music is entirely like remakes of the original game's music I, I love by the way how this ship only goes on certain days of the week as well but as well like if you played the first game you will recognize everything here almost almost actually so there's a giant Snorlax here just cash he's snoring peacefully He's chillin', he's vibin', and this guy's all like, ah, skill train is gathering Kanto. Uh, gym leaders are especially strong, they won't be easy to defeat. So he's kind of giving you a bit of a warning of like, yeah, you should probably watch out for the, the difficulty spikes here and there. Uh, but, for the most part, the Kanto... Oh, I wish my phone reception stopped working, I'll say that, this is genius, you wait, you want a battle, I'm gonna win this time, I'll be waiting for you around Route 34. Oh, gosh. Uh, but yeah, no, this guy's like, I'm the fishing guru. Do you happen to know Fisherman Wilton? He fishes on Route 44. He came through with an amazing tip on the phone. Thanks him, I caught a whole lot of rare Pokemon. What a day it was. I believe this is the guy who used to give you the uh, old rod in the original game. Uh, so, canonically, this game takes place three years after the original game, which is great, because it came out four years. No, it, it did come out three years in Japan. This came out in 99 in Japan, so it actually is three years after the original. Uh, it's definitely been longer than three years since I played this game last, but sure, okay. We hope to see you again. Cool. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, how do you wake it up? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, ooh, this is actually an interesting one. So, I'm gonna take on the gym. Uh, this gym is 100% gonna kill Babat, unfortunately, because it's the electric type gym. Uh, I should have also put away... Uh, Flashfly. Because I don't need Flashfly right for the moment. I will need... Uh, Cut and Rock. And I'm also going to take... Uh... No one, boy. That took a little bit of time. So yeah, so this is the Electric Type Gym. Now yeah, as people who have played the original game, or watched a certain person play through it <laughs> ages back, uh... Yeah, this is Vermilion City. This is the town on the harbor. I can even look it up on the map. No, not on the pack, on the map. The Pokey Gear. Uh, so yeah, this is Vermilion City. We've taken the boat all the way around and come out into the little harbor here. And that's really cool, because this is actually something that inspired, um, I remember there's one uh, ROM hack, which lets you play this game and basically it removes all the, well, maybe it's not necessarily inspiration, but I love this idea of you're starting, like, right in the middle of where, like, the first game took place. And that means that there's actually, like, no barriers, really, from going to anywhere in this place. This guy is like, ah, oh, did you visit to hear about my Pokemon? Yeah. Good, then listen up. It's my favorite, Rapidash. It's cute, lovely, smart, unbearably. Plus, uh, amazing. Oh, you think so? Too much wild beauty. Kindly love it. Hug it when sleeping, warm and cuddly. Oh, and spectacular, ravishing, simply divine. Oops, look at the time, I kept it too long. Thanks for having me, I want you to have this. Well, I guess I'll take it. Sure. It's a rare game, it makes Pokemon stronger. I prefer making my Pokemon stronger by battling, so you can have it. It's a weird, weird line of dialogue, so. Uh, look at my darling Bayleaf. The leaf on its head is so cute. That is the oddish sprite, but, you know, I'll accept it. And there's a person on the other side of the table. Our chairman is very vocal when it comes to Pokemon. Cool, got it. Uh, so yeah, so in doing that, 
all the gyms from the first game are almost recreated in in a perfect quality. I Ooh, who am I who do I lead with? So but not kind of rock. Uh I can use Herc. I can use Herc. But I don't know if Herc's gonna get like absolutely called out. Or if Herc's gonna be okay. I might as well go out with Herc. I think Herc needs a bit of a bit of love. And Hot Logo needs to just continue existing for a bit. <laughs> there we go. Lieutenant Surge recognized my potential with electric Pokemon. Think you can beat me? Not really. So yeah, listen to this music! It's the first game's music! I like the first time. And this is this is something. Like I am the youngest person ever <laughs> out of like everyone I know. Like I like all my friends are just like my my age or younger. But I was like the only person who played like first gen Pokemon like before second gen came out. And like this idea of the music just being the same as the first games, to the point where it's like not only is it like, oh, like I'm hearing the town music, like it's the battle music as well. And it's so, it's very nostalgic for me. I just love this feeling. Oh. This is like, it's double nostalgia as well, because here I am, playing, you know... Oh boy, okay. Wait, like, here I am playing a game, which, like, harkens back to another game. Uh, and, I mean, if I really wanted to double up, I'd play, like, Heart Gold or Soul Silver or something like that. Um, but, ah, yeah, I just love, like, the sound font, the, the idea of just, like, it's not quite the original, it's a bit more involved, even, it's doing, like, uh, these more, uh, I guess, less chiptune-y kinds, I mean, it's still kind of chiptune-y, but, um, there's a bit more warmth to the sound. Maybe wobbliness, rather than warmth, is probably the term I should say. Uh, I feel like I'm not really gonna be able to, to nail out this Magnemite. Maybe I can. There's one more Magnemite. <laughs> That's the part that hurts the most. The best part as well is that I don't, I think there's, like, Lieutenant Surge has a Magneton. And then that's it. We're done. We're safe. Uh, but this guy has three Magnemites, so... Uh, uh, and if you're wondering, the, uh, the, the tree you had to cut in order to get into the gym, that was, that was there in the original game. So, that's a, you know, that's, I was gonna say it's attention to detail, but... There's bound to be a lot of things that you'll recognize from the first game that are just kind of still there. Now, it's not, it's not quite a perfect recreation. There's still a handful of things that are just, uh, changed. I guess. Um, most likely because, you know, they've already done, like, a full adventure. Doing a second one is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on, Fluffer. I think Fluffer's probably gonna be uh, the one for taking out the Magnetons, but other than that, I'm not really too sure what else I'd really go up with. Give him the punch! Sorry, not Fluffa, um, Hot Dogger, jeez. But I thought Fluffa needed a level, why not? Uh, Fluffer's trying to learn Light Screen, Oh, Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna skip Thundershock, we'll go with Light Screen. That might be okay, actually. That might be pretty okay. So Light Screen is the, uh, special defense, isn't it? Or do I always get this mixed up? Yes. <laughs> I love how... Yeah, okay. Prepare to be shocked! If this was Emerald, that would totally be a double battle. But for now... Nah. Ah, uh, ooh. Ooh, mm, I just realized who I'm up against. I'm up against the, the four electrode guy. Alright, well, Herc, you're gonna get killed otherwise. <laughs> um... So... Yeah, we're going with the Hot Doggo. We'll see if Hot Doggo's okay. So, um... So, for no... I'm gonna be... Oh, gosh. Oh, no. He gets faster than me as well, so that's gonna add a bit. I'm dead the next turn. Come on, Hot Doggo. How'd you get outclassed by a level 33 Electro? 
Stop it. Stop it. Get the no on boy out. He's, he's coming out. He's coming out. And then he misses anyways. Ah, my ears. I needed them. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I'm just having a huge, like, nostalgia wave. I love this game. It's, it's great. It's, it's, it's so, so cool how it just keeps going. And the best part as well is that, like, you know, you can say, oh, like, you know, it, it extends the, the, the play time and it's not necessarily hard right now. Uh, maybe it'll be another one when the when I fight these gym leaders, though. Because, yeah, they're all going to have uh, teams that are in the, the mid-40s. They're going to be floating around the mid-40s, and that's definitely, like, right in line with my party right now. Um, granted, I've got all the benefits of having... Uh, the team leading up to it, so I guess all the effort values, the, the gym extras, uh, but still, I I feel like it's it's just, it's so cool. Um, yeah, I mentioned that it's like, yeah, games, Chrono Trigger is the perfect uh, post-game kind of game, but I, I guess there's also just the idea of playing other games and having, like, more than just the stuff that uh, is presented before the game. Uh, and I actually feel like games kind of get it a bit backwards right now. They currently uh, lean more heavily into chucking you all the stuff before you finish the game. Um, I guess that's an that's an interesting one where like quite a lot of games like do end at some point. Like they need to wrap everything up, and so all the side stuff that you're doing has to be determined. You know, ha has to conclude or has to basically be ruled out by the time you beat the game, because maybe it's like, oh, maybe a character dies, maybe, a you know, like, the whole conflict's over, so what's the point? Um, like, someone in the quest is probably gonna mention, like, some part of the world that's not, you know, valid anymore. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, I'm gonna send Chicky out, because Grass is resistant to electric, so I can fight this one last guy, uh, and then I'll heal, and then... Not if I can help it! I think the doors are open, so you don't have to do the the puzzle, which I still cannot remember for the life of me what on earth the puzzle in Lieutenant Serge's gym was. And if the puzzle is still there, then ah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't think the puzzle was there. Uh, I guess that's one thing is that, yeah, like, a lot of the gyms are just kind of not really as they used to be. Maybe they are in, like, layout, but, the you know, they, they take the easy way. Um... I mean, granted, like, I'm gonna be kind of quick fasting these gyms, so it's not gonna be like one stream, one gym. It's gonna, I'm, it's gonna go a bit quick, a little quicker than uh, than I did before, and that's why I said like six streams because it's like, as much as like this post game is, it's the whole of Kanto. It does also, it's also the whole of Kanto without really any like struggle or like not struggle. I can only, I, yeah, I can only recall, like, one thing happening. Like, you don't need, like, backtrack in, like, weird places. Like, you know how you have to go up, like, Nugget Bridge and see Bill, and then you had to, like, or, like, even at the beginning of the game, where it's like, oh, you gotta get the, the town map and go back to Professor Oak and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, no, you can, you can definitely go a lot quicker through this area. Maybe as well, there's just fewer trainers in your way. I just realize, I just realize why, why I could be surfing around the tree <laughs> in my brain. Because when you play this game, when you play first gen, you get up to this point, you don't have surf. You need to, to beat this guy in order to gain the ability to go to the next places and then eventually get surf. And here I am going, oh yeah, I've already got all the HMs. I'm not constrained by needing cut. Uh, that being said, Crobat is going to get absolutely annihilated if I sent him out here, so... So anyway, I'll do the save. There we go. So, yeah, watch that badge count go up quick. Uh, I'm probably going to open with No Arm Boy, just because... Um, 
just because this is gonna kind of get in the way a bit and Hot Doggo has the experience share so I think we're set. Uh, Garden Rock is just there, why not? But yeah. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully this will go well, and if it doesn't, then ugh. Ugh. But yeah, no. I'm excited to play Forza. Uh, I don't really have much more to say about it, because I guess I haven't really been looking into it. Um, but yeah. Hey, little boy. Uh, I have to hand it to you. It may not be very smart to challenge me, but it takes guts. When it comes to electric Pokemon, I am number one. I've never lost on the battlefield. I'll zap you just like I did my enemies in war. Jeez, man. The nice thing as well is that the gym leader music is also the first gen one. It's so... ah, oh, we got those chubby Raichu. It's massive. So, uh, what's the move set? This Raichu has er uh, Earthquake. I have Earthquake. It has Thunderbolt, Thunder, Thunder Wave, and Quick Attack. Basically, a ground type is the best way of going about it. I worry that having a ground type is just the best way of going about this whole gym, but. I kind of want to see how other people on my team do. So now he's about to send out Electabuzz. This, this is other. This is probably his. Uh, ah, my ears. <laughs> is, uh, is, is Coup de Gras kind of Pokemon. It's level 46. It's got Thunder Punch, Thunder, Light Screen, and Quick Attack. It's almost the same uh, move list, but uh, Light Screen's there to do a bit of setup. I guess I'm probably pretty set. We haven't even done the ground type gym yet. I don't even have the, the gym boost from that, so. Uh, now he's got Magneton. It's level 44. It knows Zap Cannon, Lock On, Double Team, and Swift. It is actually very similar to the other Magneton. Also, it doesn't have uh, Super. Sorry, Super Sonic? Well, it doesn't have Super Sonic. It also doesn't have Sonic Boom, which. I don't know. That's two moves that I feel like every uh, <laughs> Magnemite or Magneton has, but okay, well, I guess that's okay. Um, so yeah, watch out for Magneton being Electric Steel. Uh, now he's sending out Electrode. Uh, this is when I sent out... Uh, Hot Doggo. Let's just double up on the, the fun. And let's see how well Hot Doggo goes. Even though I know no one boy can take this, but... Uh, so... This Electrode knows Double Team, Screech, Swift, and Explosion. Nothing Electric type, but... Most certainly Explosion, which is not, not particularly fun. Uh, remember Electrode is really fast, so don't expect to be going before it unless you're overleveled. At least I got Flame Wheel. At least it's that. Ah, oh, critical hit. And there we go. He's down for the count. Hot Doggo gets quite a bit of experience. That's good fun. Uh, he's got two electrodes. It's, <laughs> they're both the same level and they both have the same moves. So, uh, again, no electric type attacks, but he's going to be using double team, which is not the most fun. But sure. Okay. If I get a crit, then sweet. If I don't, then not as sweet. Uh... So yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, yeah, I so I keep commenting on the fact that Hot Doggo hasn't evolved because Hot Doggo Growlithe uh, requires a Firestone in order to evolve. Uh, the Firestone I haven't picked up yet, and I was intending to evolve. <sighs> well, the Hot Doggo's gone. Rip. <laughs> okay. Well, no experience for anyone. <laughs> ah, you're strong. <laughs> Alright, sure. Uh, he gives it the Thunder Badge. So yeah, Hot Doggo, um... Yeah, he, he only learns two more moves. Uh, also, my speed goes up. That's a... That's an interesting one. Is that actually still a thing? I think it is, actually. Hold on. Uh... Uh... I don't know if I'm gonna find it by typing Pokemon Gold. Uh, gym badge stat increases. 
I, I don't know if I'm gonna find it by that. Uh... Who knows? Who knows? Pokemon Thunder Badge. Thunder Budge. Sorry, I misspelled it. Here we go. Uh, badge. Stat boost. Uh... He did say speed, which was kind of interesting. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well... No, I got no idea. He did- he mentioned it, but... Who knows, so... Anyways, that is, uh, that- I'm probably gonna- I'm probably gonna get that bet back, and then, uh, I'll we'll put... We'll put a thingy back in the box. He's probably not gonna get as much love for a bit. Uh... Actually, do I need... I might as well put Cut and Rock away. I don't think I need Cut for a bit. That means I can at least have, uh... Bat Bat back out. He's only level 40, he needs a bit of love. And the worst part is he's gonna get absolutely annihilated in the next gym, so... Doesn't matter, who knows. Oh my gosh, Joey! Please! It's not gonna be repeated in the last one, be well, well, 30! Jeez, come on, Joey. So. Alright. Anyways, continuing on with the trek, I'm gonna head north so that I can have that option to evolve Growlers as soon as later. But yeah, he learns two moves, Agility at level 42 and Flamethrower at level 50. I'm like, well, Flamethrower's a really nice move. I wasn't expecting to be able to get Flamethrower. If he's already 41, and I'm gonna just stick the experience share on him, I might as well wait until he's level 50. I'll be neat. The road is closed until the problem at the power plant is solved. So that's one thing. They do kind of restrict you in going in certain directions. Kind of. They do want you to solve a few things. You came out from Jota? You can zip back home in the magnet trains. If the magnet train's running. So that's one thing. It's that the the boat that goes between Jodo and Kanto is uh It's working on Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh there is this train that just leads you back to uh to Goldenrod City. Uh, they comment on the fact that there's no electricity, and that is because there is no ma ma sorry, there's no electricity. I'm stronken out. So, how do you get back to Jota? Well, there's two ways. One is, you ride the boat. Two is, you fix the power. Three, I, th I think you actually do have the ability to walk all the way back. Um, if you then go over to the other side, how do you get back here? Uh, you can easily fly once you're crossed the water in Newbark, because technically you're in a different city, so... My daughter likes to mimic people. Her mimicry has earned her the nickname Copycat around here. Man, Copycat's got those stories. My daughter's so self-centered, she only has a few friends. Yeah, dude, th this this bit of dialogue, like, a lot of people have questions. Talk to this person. Hi, do you like Pokemon? Uh, no, I just asked you. Huh? You're strange. Hmm, quit mimicking, but that's my favorite hobby. So, okay. <laughs> Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? This is a rare Pokemon, huh? It's only a doll. This one's also rare, apparently. So, uh, there's a few Pokemon that you could have caught on the way, uh, in the grass leading up to here as well. Uh, I'll just read off the list. They're all really low level. Uh, Abra, Magmite, Pidgey, Bellsprout, Meowth, Oddish. Yes, that's it. Meowth is, uh, silver only. Uh, since it's night time, I'm not seeing Pidgeys, but... I guess getting an Oddish. I don't know if you could have gotten an Oddish before. Maybe. Uh, so this is the Sylphco office building. Fortunately, Sylphco is not taken over. This is Sylphco's head office building. Uh, I think they've dumbed... Well, actually, yeah, they've incredibly dumbed it down. This is a game a long way. How this? And it gives you an upgrade, which is like, whoa, what? <laughs> So, the upgrade for, for Note, what it does is, uh, if you trade a, uh, Porygon... Yeah, and it's holding this. 
<laughs> just gives you this. If you trade a Porygon while it's holding this, it will evolve into Porygon 2. The only way to get Porygon 2. You may be wondering, where, where is Porygon? Because I think, I think we've seen a Porygon, but definitely not a... Encountered a, a second, sorry, you know, anyhow in the wild. Hi there. I got it! You wanted this! And it gives you TM29. This is... Psychic. Yeah, there you go. Which is a, a great attack if you were using a Psychic type on your team, but I'm not. So, ha. You came from Jota? Yeah, okay, I, I read that. I don't think there's really anything else to do here. A few people to talk, but... Sure. So, what was the big deal with Saffron City? Well, Saffron City is home to not one, but two gyms. Uh, reading this sign, this is the Fighting Dojo. Now, the Fighting Dojo kind of got shunted to being... Hi! Karate King, the Fighting Dojo's master. It's in a cave in Jodo for training. It, it's just... just He's ignored ya. It's just... Uh, okay. But that does mean that maybe there's something for us later. Uh, for now... There's a gym. This gym is bound to kick my butt. This is actually the same. <laughs> I love that you're also the champ in making. But he doesn't give you any tips. So, uh, as the psychic type gym, I'm gonna get absolutely annihilated with uh, both Herc and Babat. So, I could be using No Arm Boy. Uh, I'm gonna go rather safe. I'm going to send Chicky out, because I think Chicky is probably a decent bet. Just because, I guess, like, pure grass type. So, if you ever get lost here, just always go horizontal. Or vertical, actually, because you get to the, the, next, the next spot quicker. Uh, so, yeah. It's kind of neat that they've actually got the, the gym layout still here intact. So, you do still have to solve the, the mystical teleporting gym. Whoa. Good thing I got Buddy Slam! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> take that, Drowsy. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I alluded to earlier, I'm gonna rip into games with uh, wonderful pre-order bonuses. Uh, I will commend Forza for being rather simple, but a little bit needless. So there is a base version of the game that is currently 90 Australian dollars. There is a... Deluxe version of the game. I think that's the term that they use and that version of the game is $150, but it contains basically everything apart from whatever DLCs they decide to not add to their car pass later on, but that's everything that they've basically said they're doing um, So it's for the most part the complete version of the game sure and that's also including the two big expansions they're doing later uh, which Given that every other Forza Horizon has done the same thing, I think there's something to expect. Sure. Then there's one version in between, which includes just the base game and the car pass. It doesn't include either of the DLCs, uh, the expansions, and it might be skipping out on something else. I forgot what it was. You don't get a VIP bonus, you don't get, like, the experience with... Yeah, there's some things there, I don't know. Uh, Franklin. Also, I guess adding experience boost is an incentive. I know they've been doing it for a long time, but I'm like, ugh. Uh, I always get a bit of a, a salty taste in my mouth of games that are trying to sell me something before really, like, any of us know it. So with this car pass, it's like, what's in the car pass? Who knows? I don't even know how the game plays, and you're selling me on these, like, extra cars that I gotta drive? Who knows? The same thing with the two expansions. It's like, I, I've got an idea based on your previous titles, but... I don't know what you're really intending to do now, and that's something that's like, kind of, you know, it throws me off. Uh, I'm at least a bit fortunate that I'm not paying directly for Forza this time, I'm just paying for the, the Game Pass and we'll call it a day. Um, but that's something that, like, a lot of these games do. And then I had a mate send me uh, the Elden Ring pre-order bonuses, and this is where it got a little confusing. Because, well, well, really confusing, because uh, he sent me the little breakdown, the little matrix of which editions give you what stuff. And so, there's a, a standard edition, then there's, I think they call it the, 
this might also be the deluxe edition, and that comes with a digital art book and soundtrack. And then there exists uh, three tiers after that, none of which include the digital art book and soundtrack. At least on that matrix. It instead includes, uh, like, physical goodies, each gaining more physical goodies um, than the last one. And one of the physical goodies was an art book and a separate digital soundtrack, and that's one one where I questioned, I was like, wait, what, what's the digital soundtrack in one spot compared to another? I don't know. What I didn't even realize is that none of them were actually additional content. They had this long matrix of, like, things that you could, or that you would be getting with this deluxe edition, but uh, unlike other games that I've kind of seen, none of them have been particularly... Yeah, none of them were... With extra game content. One of them, one of them, the deluxe version does say you get a cosmetic that you can unlock in, through the game anyways, just day one. And, um, I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I don't know how to really, like, sell this experience of, uh, I guess, uh, I, g I guess a game that's, you know, not out yet, but... To me, yeah, it kind of throws me off, having stuff being sold to me, but I have no idea how it fits in anything. That's That would be like, for example, if I told you, and, and, and this is legit one, if I told you that, you, like, pre-order a Pokemon game, and I know that they've tried this, pre-order a Pokemon game, and you get, uh, agility is a great move, and I am not skipping Leah for that. Because that's exactly what Hot Doggo needs, he needs that sweeping ability. Uh, I know I've got the poison, but I think I can survive- Ooh. I think I can survive one more... ...battle. Because this is the last battle, I believe. F you, F you, F you. I can see it to your soul! Oh my gosh, jeez. <laughs> Thank you, Doris. Boo. Uh... Yeah, I... I don't know if you guys... There's bound to be ones like this. Actually, understanding what's in, uh, the Battlefield expansions really throws me off. I will still say one of the worst examples I've found is Borderlands 2, where it's like there's, uh, there's a season pass, and then there's the separate Headhunter packs and the separate level increase pack, and then, uh, I think Borderlands 2 just made two DLC packs, or two, two expansion passes, which I think includes everything, but it's still the idea of, like, people were buying this deluxe edition for the longest time beforehand, only for there to be a second expansion. Um, Dirt Rally 2, I think, was in the same boat, where they did that. Uh, and then they, they had one saving grace, and that was they added this Colin McRae, um, mini campaign, which I actually thought was actually pretty decent. Even if it was just, you know, scenarios in the same area, it's like, or in the same maps that were always in the game. Uh, the way it kind of was framed, I love, by the way, how I've just, like... Have I just gone backwards, or I'm... I'm oh, I'm, I'm on, like, the... Yeah, you know, the secondary paths. Alright, I'm gonna take the vertical path out. Do I know which way I'm going? Heck no. Heck no. You just do this, you'll eventually get there. There you go, first try. Lovely poison effect, I love it. Uh, but yeah, even even then, it's like, well, I mean, Dirt Rally 2 did do the, the... The worst part is that they had two season passes, and then they basically... Yeah, they confusingly called it the Season 1 plus Season 2 pass, and then the Season 3 plus Season 4 pass. And and this is one where it's like, you've picked Season as in the four seasons of the Earth, and not these, like, seasonal, it comes around once a year idea of programming. Like, not, sorry, not programming, but like television programming. Like, this is a term that's got two meanings, and everyone uses a different meaning depending on what they feel like. Uh, and that, that confuses me. Um... 
I guess the thing is that, yeah, I can sit down and I can try and understand, like, what a particular game is trying to offer. Uh, but it's, like, at some point, it's like, yep, I can just be a patient gamer, and I can just play stuff later. Um, I guess that's, yeah, I, like, I, I'm, I'm getting more and more, uh, antagonistic towards experiencing these, uh, day one kinds of, you know, like, DLCs. And that's actually a wonderful segue to a game that I have been playing this week. Oh, you don't, like, fight me when I'm looking? I knew you were coming. Uh, it's November. I'm not. Three years ago, I had a vision of your arrival. You're after my badge. I don't enjoy battling, but it's my duty as a lead. Bro! Bro, why'd you take this job? You're taxpayer-funded and you don't even like doing it. Ah, oh, can't believe it. Can't believe it. Oh, well. Anyway, this is the gym leader of Saffron City. This is Sabrina. Who is actually the sixth gym leader of the first gen and not the fifth. But most people fight her as the fifth one. She starts off with an Espeon. She's a bit higher level now, but she does only have three Pokemon. So I... I'm going in with the agility. Because I know that they're faster. But I also know that they've got Psychics. So they're going to throw me off on that one. There's not really any point in sticking around, is there? Ah, oh, it sucks because agility is a great move, but... Ah... Uh, no hope. So... Do I just go in bulky? I'll go in bulky. Oh well. Uh, so yeah, this Espeon has Sand Attack, Quick Attack, Swift, and Psychic. There is one particular attack that... They're gonna use. Ooh! That Quick Attack actually is a smart move to use, like... Given... That I had 10 health left. Because then I was like, whatever I did with agility just goes away. Well, I'm just going to use Earthquake, so who cares. I'm... I still don't understand how no Arm Boy is that fast. I know he's higher level than everything else on my team, but like... Pretty sure Espeon's a bit of a speedy boy. Sure. <laughs> we'll take it. I'll, I'll take that. So, alright. Well, I don't want no Arm Boy to hog all the glory. So how about let's get Hot Doggo just that passive experience and pass the baton to Fluffer, who hasn't gotten any love this fight. So this is Mr. Mime. It's also level 6. It's also a female. I had a rule where I was like, every like trainer, their Pokemon are always the same gender as them. This Mr. Mime is the only female on the team of three. Uh, it's a bit of a weird one. I can do a light screen setup. And you can do a reflect setup, but I'm like... You know, I'm a special attacker here. So, okay. Yeah, that light screen actually might help a, a bit. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Cool. Uh, I guess I'm not really kicking in the quickest either, but that's okay. Yeah, Mr. Mime's not really tons of a joke, but at least a little bit. Oh, cool, sweet. 669 experience, jeez. Alright, now here comes the Magna Carta. Alakazam, it's level 48. It knows Recover, Future Sight, Psychic, and Reflect. He's definitely going to be a strong boy. Uh, I'm hoping that he doesn't get to spam Reflect too much, but... Maybe I should use Thunder Wave. Ah, that's a lot of damage! That's a lot of damage. I don't think Fluff is going to make it, though. If I do it with one health and sw Woo! Woo! My man! My man! Fl you, you fired. Fired. <laughs> fired. Ah. <laughs> uh, see, I, now here's the thing. I can't send out Herc because fighting type's going to get annihilated. And I can't send out Babat because poison type's getting annihilated. So Babat's been caught out twice. That's... Ah. Uh, it's not the best. That's okay, I got Chicky. I can do like a tap. That's not a tap. Uh... Is Grass Physical? Might be actually. Alright. Well, we'll kick in with the Poison Powder. Get that PlayStation Network. And we'll kick in and we'll see what's going on. The light screen wearing off is definitely a bit of a move, but... That's okay. Oh, that's a that's a bit of damage. 
I think the grass is physical, so this is not gonna do a ton. Yeah, that's not great. Ah, I guess we're going with the bulk again. Yeah, so unfortunately, I mean, could be using Future Sight if he wanted to, but it's just gonna be spam Psychic until he runs out of PP, which is not gonna be, not gonna be any day now for a bit. Oh, oh, that's a that's a bit of damage. Do I have anything? No, because Alakazam is fast. Babat is faster, probably. Oh, do I commit? Nah, I think I'll be good with the wing attack, yeah. He's probably gonna get killed though, because I don't think this wing attack is- nah. I should've- I should've done the Confuser Egg. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, I should've done Confuser Egg, that's a bad move on my end. Ah, uh, that's okay. I've still got, uh, Herc, who's- Who might be faster. And the Reflex faded, so I could- No, no. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> He's got recover as well, like he could. What? 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 How? How? How did that happen? How did that happen? I'll, I'll, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> your power exceed your brass now Heracross <laughs> somehow he lived. I don't know man. I don't know. I got no clue. <laughs> the Marsh Badge draws out your subliminal powers, although I fail to accurately predict your power. This much I know to be true. You will become a celebrated and beloved champion. Cool. I got no clue. I got no clue what happened there. But sure. Sure, we'll just take the prize and run. Take the prize. How do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? <laughs> Woo! There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, also, it, I guess just for note, uh, friendship power is too strong in this Pokemon to kill. True, true. Uh, for reference, those are your badges. Uh, they don't. I have a tab for the for the second set of badges. It's a little weird, so you only know how many badges you got by uh just kinda counting. It's on the save screen as well, so it's that. You can know your Pokemon to both the perfect health. Welcome to Gen 2! <laughs> I guess this is a thing. Should I head over to... Yeah... Well, let's go up. Cause yeah, well, I can drive my way all the way to Cerulean City. Now, fortunately, they've opened up the gate! So you don't need cut to leave. They've done that. Uh, you can also jump down here, and this used to be where the daycare was. Uh, it is... Yeah! I sense Sinister Shadow hovering over you. Take this to ward it off. You get a cleanse tag. Why not? This is most certainly not a... You're in mortal danger, but you're now protected. Oh my gosh, what a scam. Her grandma is in the warning off what she believes to be evil spirits. I'm sorry that she stalled you. Yeah. So yeah, it's not a daycare anymore. Um, I think in Heart Gold it actually is another daycare. So they actually put in two daycares, which is interesting. I think. Off the top of my head, maybe. Uh, this used to be the cycle shop. They moved it. So it's just a closed door, <laughs> for sure. Uh, by the way, all these Pokemarts are, are like selling things, I should probably note. So you can get just generally the same items you could always get. Because there's only so many items in Pokemon to really like get. I I would love for, for Pokemon games, and actually, no, sorry, I take it back because the new games do do it. They uh, have technical records in, um, in stores that you'll just come across. And I love that idea of giving yourself a new repertoire of moves as you travel around the world into different places. 
Whereas, like, this game is like, man, you know, there's nothing really fancy about it. Show me your confusion. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I could save, but... 340 miles an hour, jeez, man. Cool. Route well, 9 stretches to the east. The power plant is at the end. So that's, yeah, that's one thing, is that you can, there's your power plant, which is, uh, I guess the thing I need to look at eventually. Uh, run into the gym, and there's no one here. I guess I gotta do the thing first, don't I? Oh well. Uh, crystal clean, which one was crystal clean? I, I already know of the one where you can start anywhere in the world. Um, I didn't play it through the whole way. Uh, but I thought that one was kind of interesting. Um, I got a bit caught out though, because I think not everything scaled. So, for reference, that ROM hack, yeah, you could start anywhere you wanted to. And they actually removed a fair number of the barriers that blocked you from going to different areas. But what they did try to do was they tried to scale, I think, gym leaders, depending on the number of badges you had. Um, it's interesting. I think it kind of leads to a bit of weird balance here and there. Um, but yeah, no, I, like, you know... For ROM hack's sake, it's like, you know, a ROM hack that does something very, like, mechanically different. It's actually a real, like, neat, uh, idea. Eh? My item finder is responding! <laughs> so, that's a, that's a hint and a half, by the way. Uh, so yeah. You can head north to the Nugget Bridge. There's a surprising lack of trainers at the Nugget Bridge. Ooh, I've got a full inventory. I'm... I'm gonna get caught out if I don't box things before I keep going. Uh, so back to the, the box. Uh, yeah, I should really like look into a couple of ROM hacks a bit more. Uh, anyway, let's deposit. Uh, what do I have? Carbo, so don't need it. Iron, really don't need it on the fly. PP up. <laughs> uh, two berries. Heck no. Um, Dragon Fang is nice, but I don't need to randomly do it. The Ice Elixir, when do you ever get iced in this game? Uh, the Metal Coat, I don't have any Metal Pokemon. Rare Candy, sure. Upgrade is never going to come up. Uh, the Focus Pants, okay, but sure. Uh, Clemsag might be a bit more okay, but... I got no real need for it right now. Like, legit, that's not a lot, like... You can skip the wild Pokemon a lot, because first gen is surprisingly small. It's full of a lot of routes just covered in trainers and not, like, wild Pokemon. Um, and that's, that's, I guess, something very uh, fundamentally different uh, with how the rest of this game goes. Okay, so, who do I send out? I think I can actually send out Babat for the first time in ten years. Yeah, there we go. Finally, Babat gets a bit of time to shine. Beat the six of us trainers to win a fabulous prize! Think you've got what it takes? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is the Nugget 5. Slash 6. Over here. Cool. Alright. Hi there, Oddish. How you doing? Uh... Wing attack, thank you very much. Yeah, nah, so... Yeah. I'm having a good time right now. I... I don't know if this might be quicker than six streams. I was expecting this to go on for a bit longer, but it's like, man, I'm already like an hour eight in. I already got two of the badges, and honestly, like, you know, you can go around, you can get all the badges, but it's like, I mean, it's not really. Now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So, uh, so anyway, this idea of launch DLC. Hi there, Wigglytuff. This idea of launch DLC ties into the game that I've been playing this week, uh, and that is. Alien Isolation. Now, I know I said I was playing it last week, and I played four hours of it on Sunday, on the Halloween night, uh, and then the stream was the day after. Uh, I have now, since then, beaten the game on that hard difficulty, got the achievement somehow for playing on the hardest difficulty, even though there's an option below, which I'm reading is the same thing, but it hides the UI. I guess both count, sure. Hi there, Gramble. How you doing? We just keep using wing attack. That's what we do. Um, he's got a bit of bit of beef on him. Uh, and then no, no, no. Sorry. On top of that, 
I've gotten every other achievement because it pretty much just involves playing through the game again on the Babby difficulty and just not dying. And if you do die, uh, the, the trick is to just pause the game, click load checkpoint before any of those death animations really kick in. Uh, that seems to work fine for me. Um, apparently there was a fallback where you could load previous save as an option all the time, but sure. Uh, but that being said, I did pretty like the game. It's got its quirks, but I think one thing that made the game, like, rather, uh, endearing, and something that I think actually circumvents a lot of, like, strange AAA game, uh, design, is that one, it doesn't really cake on the mechanics. It actually does ease you into it, keeps giving you a bit, and then it gives you this, like, false climax, maybe about two-thirds of the way through the game, and then it keeps giving you these false climaxes, but while reintroducing your items in, like, a new context. And I, I really did like the way that it did that. I'm gonna try and spoiler-free uh, the way I discuss it, but I kind of liked where uh, everything took you in, in the plot. Uh, it felt a little long, uh, it took me 13 hours to beat the game, which I hear is actually on the quickest side. Thanks how long to beat on that one. Um, but it definitely, like, there's a bit of, like, it took longer at the beginning because I felt without any tools and without any knowledge of how things were working, uh, I was taking a lot more time in doing things. Um, but after, yeah, after, like, I kind of got into the, the swing of things, and then also after I realized I was going so conservative on my tools that... I could actually, um, you know, just kind of go a bit more all out. The game kind of settled in. I did stop feeling a bit scared, but I also feel like maybe that's the point, is that it leads away from this alien is out there to kill you and you're absolutely stuffed to you've got some tools and you know how that alien's working. You've, you've seen it for a bit. Um, and the pacing of the game actually improves a fair bit as, um, yeah, as I, as I went along, because I feel like... Uh, I spent maybe, like, the first eight hours, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe actually, yeah, I, I hit the, um, let's say the reactor about nine hours in, and then, yeah, the rest of that, like, felt very quick afterwards. Um, so, yeah, it's Schoolboy Jack yet again, my Voltor's really energetic. I don't care, I just fought a breedable Vaporeon. Oh, they've got the double battle. I'm no four. I, they they introduced this like I couldn't have just gone to the, the thing. I finished my homework. Uh, oh, I'm talking about Alien Isolation. Um, so I that's the game I've been playing all week. Um, yeah, no, I, I did really enjoy it. Um, I, I did really like how... Uh, and this is something. The game had the most perfect, like, premise to tell a producer that, oh sorry, it had the most perfect premise for the producer of the game to tell, uh, to tell shareholders that this game would have skill points and replayability, and they chose not to do that. And I absolutely do love how the game is built around this tight set of mechanics without, like, divvying it up too much on skill points, or alternatively, giving you skill points and then never really like, it's never really balanced. My biggest problem with skill points in a lot of modern games is that they either, yeah, they either split up the, the play styles so much that you don't get to play with all the, the styles, uh, and that's okay, but I then find that, like, well, the, the things that you do have is not really engaging enough to just play the game. Like, I would like to be able to do all the things sometimes. There's, there's some games, I think there's X Human Revolution works okay with the way it's got, and I know, yeah, double battle, air quotes. I'll stomp you! Uh, but... Uh, yeah, there's other games, like, I'll, I'll note Far Cry 3, and it's like... Uh, and, and this leads into the other camp, it's like, either... Yeah, I, I start to... min-max the things that I do have available, and I end up not caring about the remaining, like, unlocks that I'm getting. Uh, and that's, that's a huge problem I have, so. Alien Isolation, there's no skill points. You just get things. Uh, if you're curious enough in the world, you will find upgrade blueprint, uh, blueprints, although the game kind of gives you most of them, like, 
they're kind of in the way a lot of the time. You're not forced to pick them up, but you're definitely, you know, you're going to find them. You're gonna see them. So there's that. Whoa, too much. Yeah, no man. Get wrecked. This crowbat just sweeps everything, apparently. Uh, I love this, like, bit over here. Uh, I should probably read out what, uh, Pokemon are in this route. Uh, Pidgeotish, Bellsprout, Venomoth. I know, right? It's level 10, that's the best part. It's so, like, low level. Uh, Abra, Weepin' Bell, and Pidgeotto, except not Pidgey and Pidgeotto, because it's nighttime. But yes, Venomoth, because it's nighttime, as well as Oddish. Why Venomoth? That's a, that is an interesting one. Shannon. Shannon's got the Paris. Uh, when, <laughs> what are they implying here? Who knows? Uh, Rip Paris with the quad weakness, by the way. <laughs> Bug Grass. That's a tough gig. That is a tough gig, Bug Grass. Can't do anything about it. It's like the ground rock Pokemon. It's just like, I mean, it's cool, but it's got such a glaring, like, quad weakness. And before you say, oh, but you've got Heracross, flying is not as glaring as grass. Grass is pretty direct. Although I guess a lot of Pokemon can learn Aerial Ace, so never mind. Yeah, she's got a Parasect, but it's not enough. Know how, like, some of the trainer Pokemon are, like, leaning to the, the mid-30s now? No, they've always been in the mid-30s, and also this is 20, 29. This is remarkably low level for the people on this bridge. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I like about Alien Isolation. The sound design was really, really good, and I know that's probably like a broken record and everyone who reviews the game probably says it, but there's one thing I absolutely loved, and that was that, like, that I just wanted to beat you up! Like, okay. Also, cut tree. There's a cut tree right there. Ah! I looked it up, it's a protein. It doesn't really matter too much for me, but sure. That is a Porygon. Is he gonna do anything? Probably not. I had the up- Oh, he's got the tri-attack! I love the animation, it's just like, oh, a bit of everything. And then you run that 10% chance of whatever status condition getting you. It's a fun attack, I love it. You should call it fun attack, easy. Ah, uh, there's one singular trainer left, so I'll, <laughs> I'll see how Crobat does. Hi there! You took on one more battle than you expected, but you won anyway. As promised, you win a prize. Thank you, my man. But after seeing how you battle, I want to see how I'll fare. How about help? <laughs> well, at least it's a good sport about it. <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the sound is great in this game, and that's actually, like, one thing, like, there's a handful of games out there that it's like, whatever they do, Procon Gen 2 Sprite be true. Por Porygon, Porygon has seen better days. He saw, he saw, um, Coughing's Gen 1 sprite, and he was like, oh boy. Oh boy. He saw a lot of people's Gen 1 sprites. Never been the same. That's what you get for not being in the anime after one episode. That's the, f that's the best part, is that they never, they never put Porygon in any other episodes because no one wants to even, like, consider the risk of there being a seizure show. <laughs> Every day as hell. Yeah. That's such a, that episode of Pokemon is, like, such a bizarre one as well, because it's, like... Like, I mean, I guess it was at a time when, like, no one... Oh, they did Porygon for- oh, they brought him back? Okay. Alright. But, like, yeah, that came out at a time where it's, like, you know, anything kinda goes. Uh, I'm gonna send out Herc, despite the fact that he's definitely Fire-type and he could burn the heck out of me. I'm gonna take a swing. Herc! The son of Zeus! I mean, hey, he survived Alakazam, so I think Charmeleon's a... ...cool take. Or he could just use scary face, like, oh boy. Oh boy, I'm, I'm scared out of my boots right here. Well, that Char Melon is Char Deaden. And Hot Doggo's still climbing the levels, but we'll get there. War Turtle. I love War Turtle's sprite. He's coming in strong. He's sailing in. Uh, and then the last thing with Alien Isolation, uh, a lot of the, the graphical issues I had, it was mostly just a little bit of LOD popping. That happened from time to time, but uh, 
surprisingly, like, I guess the amount of, like, filters and kind of post-processing on the frame really did obscure maybe limitations of the textures or the models, and in a way that stylistically I think works out okay. I think the game also kind of is a little easier on the, on the graphics just because it's dark a lot of the time. Uh, what do I put in front of Reversal? I find Counter's just a hard one. But I've also got Endure, which I don't know, man. Uh, so for reference, Reversal is... Uh, pretty much, it's a move that deals damage depending on how low your HP is. Uh, I believe it's... Yeah, it's a little more forgiving in this game and 3rd gen. Uh, than it was, than it now is. Um, I think I'm gonna replace Endure. I think Endure is just a move that I'm, I've just got no, no hope of doing. And I know, I know you're saying, oh, can't you do Endure and then Reversal? And I'm like, yeah, you can, but... Do I trust it? I don't know. I think I just trust using Endure like, I'm sorry, Reversal like normal. Uh... Maybe I should have used Endure. That's illegal. Oh, well. You know Bill? He's my grandson. He's in Jodo. He does something with PC. So I'm house My grandson Bill told me about a Pokemon that has a long tongue. If you have a Pokemon, may I see it, please? No! It's too bad. Uh, do I have to show him every Pokemon in order to get the prizes? I think I do. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> for note, um... Yeah, this guy may be the sole arbiter of all the evolution stones in the game. And I think I have to show him them in order! I have to show him them in order, so that means I need to find a Lickitung somewhere in order to get my wonderful Firestone! Oh, So the question is... What do you get Lickitung? Route 44? Route 44? <laughs> well... I'm not getting the Firestone right away. Oh, back I go. Path of shame. Path of shame. Alright. You cannot. You can get them only in the morning. Oh, it's like a tongue not even. Big. No, no. He's uh, he's he's there all day in gold silver. He's only morning and crystal. Uh, as a bonus point, the other one I'd need to get is, uh, Oddish. So I actually would need to... ...properly catch an Oddish. Uh... Listen, not all is... not all is lost. Uh, so round... Six? Uh, or five. Five's the better one, because five's right there. So let me just let me just double check where's where's Oddish. Uh sixty percent night time. Easy. That's thanks to Jesus for this. Uh how many Pokeballs do I have? Seventeen? Easy. Getting those wild encounters again. Okay, I was not expecting the ten percent encounter, I was expecting the sixty percent encounter. So yeah, so, uh, looking up, all the, um, well, actually, no, the Lickitung one is a bit weird. Here we go. Here's Oddish. Uh, but yeah, all the evolutions, uh, or oh, sorry, all the stone evolutions that, uh, oh, sorry, all the stones that you can get, uh, you have to show them a different Pokemon that particularly does eventually evolve with a stone. Uh, Oddish is probably the most fun one in the list, because not only does it level up first before it evolves, but it also... Uh, can take a, a sunstone, and, or oh, sorry, Gloom can take a sunstone as an evolution item in this game. Um, I don't know. Uh, Lickitung doesn't even evolve in this game, uh, but you'll get an Everstone out of him, so... Uh, wait, didn't I already catch an Oddish? I must have. Nice, I've caught a second Oddish, why not? Alright. So, anyway, he's walled off the, the thing. Uh, let me just double check the gym. The gym is off limits for now. Yeah, I guess I gotta go, I gotta go east first. Uh, 
Oh well. Uh... Yeah, let's see how this goes. Yeah, they've kind of redone the layout of the city a bit just to... Just to let you leave. Oh, except... <laughs> except you can't always leave. It's illegal in this case. Alright, well... Who's getting yeeted out of my party today? Like I am gonna need. Uh... Hmm. I am gonna need no one, boy, and I kinda don't wanna get rid of, uh... Get rid of her for a moment, just cause he is at least higher level. Yeah, I had... I had an Oddish the whole time! That's how long it's been! That's how long it's been, jeez. Uh, I'm gonna need that Coven Rock. Okay, cool. Well, no gym for the moment, but we'll probably be there when I come back. Uh, so we're going away this away. Alright, now I can cut and fight more trainers. But now yeah, overall I had a good time with Alien Isolation. I would legitimately recommend this. I, I typically are on the fence of liking a new game, like, really, really liking, but I think what this game was is that it's got some quirks here and there, but it felt much more complete of a package uh, than uh, I feel like a lot of other games feel. Um, and I think one thing that kind of leans towards this is the fact that it doesn't actually have a lot of substantial DLC, and in turn, what the game actually offers feels much more complete than I probably would have expected out of other games that do tack on the DLC a bit more. Uh, in doing so, the DLC is kind of worthless in this game. <laughs> so, and this is the original topic of um, uh, DLCs that were announced at launch because both content e DLCs. Uh, this one's going to be a fun one. Okay. Uh, both content e DLCs were. Uh, Released on launch day, I believe, or I, I think the second one was released like a couple of weeks later. Um, but uh, both of them took me 20 something minutes to complete. On hard. I had no idea what I was doing. But it, yeah, what they basically are is very small scenarios where you play as Ellen Ripley from the film Alien and not Amanda Ripley from the game Alien Isolation. But you're still fighting the alien, and you're still following objectives, and you still hold the same items, and inevitably, some of the rooms kind of look the same as the main game, and the, yeah, it kind of just feels like a small little goodie. But yeah, I, I don't feel like my life is any better by playing it, uh, so sure. The other DLCs are all uh, challenge mode DLCs, and if there's one thing I don't really like, it's challenge mode DLCs, because... Most of the time, I don't particularly find the mechanics of the game work if you provide arbitrary maps. Um, even if, like, I can see in theory, like, why it's okay, but, uh, I don't really need beam look. I'm good. Oh, I hit B twice. The curse of having to scroll through more text blocks. No! Yes! There you go. Uh, new route, by the way, so I've got to read out the... the Pokemon list, again, there's grass here. You've got Mankey and Primeape, only in gold. Uh, Radita, Sparrow, Raticate, and Fero. Uh, but Sparrow and Fero only available in the daytime, so rip me on that one. Good old Polyrath. It's been a while since we've seen a Polyrath. And you know what's the best part? This one's lower level than the last one. I know, right? <laughs> it was in the fifth gym, and it had a level, he had a level 30 Polyrath, and this one's 29, like... Uh, if there's one thing, like, I understand you can take this, you know, you can do this post-game in any order. And so we're gonna get into this, like, weird, weird territory where it's like, yeah, like, I could be going somewhere way off. And yeah, they need Pokemon that at least are at least approachable uh, to fight. But, like, mid-30s? These are not even mid-30s. That was 29, man. Alright, once Growlithe is level 50, by the way, like... <laughs> Turn off that experience shade, he doesn't need it. I just want him to get to level 50 so I can give him the evolution, like, sooner than later. 
Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I didn't like the, <laughs> the DLC of Alien Isolation. Uh, surprisingly, none of the uh, achievements relate to any of the DLC. They're all just the main game, and so I did it in two goes. And yeah, one of those achievements was uh, beat the game without uh, dying, which I feel like is a little, a little annoying, but not the worst. Primate looks like Fred Flintstone. Maybe. Oh no, don't do this to me. Don't do this. Okay, we're safe. I'm, I'm bound to switch out though, I'll tell ya. Hot Doggo is slowly leveling up in the back there. Look at that. I'll send out Chicky, why not? No, that's pretty much the the big game that I've been playing this this week. I don't think I've really been playing anything else. It's mostly been that. I did kind of binge play it over the weekend. Like I I probably was about halfway through the game, and then I played like the whole rest of it on Saturday, and then I played the entire game on Sunday on easy on the easy one. Um, the easy difficulty actually gave me like an appreciation of how the game's like AI was working as well because like I kind of felt like okay like. There were some bits where it's like, okay, here, the alien's in the room, I'm hiding in the cupboard. I then leave the cupboard, and the alien comes back into the room, immediately, and I have to hide in the cupboard again. And then it's like, okay, well maybe, maybe if I start like, walking around a desk, like while he's on the other side of the desk, and so he doesn't see me. It's, it's my hometown, Sydney. Uh, and like... I learned a few things about how, how the, the alien was working there, but I particularly felt like, oh, you know, it's it it's so cruel. And then I play on easy and I notice the alien one doesn't show up a lot of the time. Like he actually just sits out, lets you walk with that tension that he's could come or that he can come to ruin your day, but not necessarily doing it. Whereas like on the hard one, it's like, yeah, no, he does ruin your day every time, which I, I found was absolutely hilarious, like after the fact. And then, yeah, the other thing as well is that also, like, when the alien comes into the room, a lot of the time, he'll then go into a vent and he'll leave. And that was one thing I felt was a little confusing, because I was like, oh, like, I know the alien in the film goes into, you know, he hides in ventilation, like, that's why no one knows where he goes, because he's all over the place. And then I thought it was weird when I was playing on hard, I was like, oh man, he never goes into the vents. And then, like, yeah, that, that's kind of, like... Something I feel like I missed a little bit, but also like, yeah, that's a good reason why he doesn't go into the vents a lot because, you know, when he's in the vents, uh, either he's in the ceiling and he's directly above you and he's dripping on the ground and that's an insta kill, or he's just kind of gonna respond, but not really like she be coming around Mount Silver when she comes. Uh, Among Us Halloween DLC. There's Among Us Halloween DLC. Ah, uh, do okay. I I am. Like, I'm a bit of a weirdy, because i never played... I've only played, like, a handful of matches of Among Us, and then... That's it. Uh... I don't know much about Among Us, like, really, and as... Particularly as the cultural phenomenon of spotting, uh, basically an A shape. Oh, well, that was the easiest Graveler I've ever faced. He's too low level, that self-destruct's not gonna... Yeah, that's not, like, too nasty. It's a little nasty though, because it's got two more of them, but... That's okay, I can fight him. I can take him on. But, yeah, no, I... I never... I never really understood... I mean, I understood Among Us, actually, but... Like... Forever? I don't know. I, I, I would have felt Among Us would have been like... You know, as long-lived as Fall Guys was. Where it's like, yeah, it's a bit. Takes the world by storm. Uh, I think the, the thing that kind of gets me with Among Us is, um... Like, the game had been out since 2017, but it only picked up popularity later on, in 2019. And boy has it been a while, hasn't it? It's been a long while and we're still making Among Us jokes. It's crazy. How has this not, like, not gotten old yet? I don't know. It's crazy. Have you ever been to a picnic? They're so much fun! Oh my gosh, jeez. You're never gonna hear that. Ooh, Skiploons movies right there. 
Disregard the fact this is a female. Disregard the fact. Uh, this is how you get your advertisers. Absolutely loving the transcript. I don't know who advertises. Internet just turned into YouTube recommendations with hype delay. Uh, oh, for Among Us, maybe. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't really know, like, how the zeitgeist has lasted that long. And especially, like, it doesn't have that, like, universal appeal. Maybe it does. Like, there's a, there's a handful of games where it's, like, we'll constantly be talking about them. Like, Minecraft, Skyrim, uh... I was gonna say Bioshock, but not Bioshock. I don't know why that one crossed my mind. Um, you know, like, uh, Mario, and even, even to some degree Pokemon. Uh, like, there's games out there with that, like, wide universal appeal, where it's like, they appeal to kids, they appeal to people looking for at least, like, some game with a lot of intricate mechanics. Uh, they appeal to people who love playing games in different ways to other people, uh, in the case of Pokemon, uh, or Mario, where it's like, it's a lot of high skill and a lot of high mobility, and people love games with high mobility. Skyrim's a game where, yeah, a lot of people do whatever. Um, I guess that's something that kind of a lot of those games I haven't gone. The power plant is down! Something was stolen! So, okay. So, this is... This is what you gotta do. And this power plant is, like, available in the main game. And so if you come back here with Surf, uh, you can just go and catch Zapdos. He's right here. He's actually incredibly easy to get, and... Rather broken if you actually just want to play, like, first gen. In a very easy way. Uh, unfortunately, no Zapdos here, and I don't think Zapdos is available in this game, unfortunately. Uh, but there are Quagsires just sitting here. Why not? Uh, there is a 40% chance to see Quagsire here. Uh, you can also find uh, Voltorb, Spiro, Raticate, Fear, and Electabuzz, which is kind of interesting. So you go in, and this guy's all like, ah, Thief Frog in the power plant. What is this world coming to? This used to be an abandoned power plant, now it's just... There you go. Look at that, we got back up and running. That's cool. Someone made off with a pot, that's essential for the generator. Without it, the new generator is useless. Useless, useless, useless. The power plant's manager is up ahead. But since someone wrecked the generator, he's been both sad and furious. The magnet train consumes a lot of electricity. It can't move if the new generator isn't operating. Oh my gosh. I think he's sitting in here, isn't he? I love these cables. Every time. Hi there. I, I, I'm ready to blast someone! Oh my gosh. Who would dare ruin my generator? I spent so much time on it. If I catch him, he's gonna get a taste of my zap cannon. Jeez. So, I think... I think someone in there triggers something. I don't know who. Probably the manager. I think that's who they're going for. Or I guess this guy. Probably that. Yeah. I just got word from Cerulean. It appears that a shady character has been loitering around. Could I ask for your cooperation? Well, good thing I was just there. Cool. Cool beans. So, alright. Well, I'm gonna wander back to Cerulean. Oh, we're just gonna say sus in Among Us now. Oh my gosh. That's what I get from mentioning it, I swear. <sighs> I'll never understand it. Like, I, I understand, like, saying things is sus. Like, sure, but, like, it's been two years, guys. <laughs> how How has Among Us not been unpopular? How has it constantly stayed relevant? I don't understand. Oh well. The cut tree there is actually really annoying, isn't it? So, anyway, into the gym. Ah! Oops! I'm so sorry. You not hurt, okay? I'm very busy. No time for talking with you. Not good for me if seen by somebody. Oh no, you've seen me already. I make big mistake. Hey, you. Forget you see me, okay? You see here, no nothing, okay? Bye, kid. Nothing. Bye, bye, go go. <laughs> we have memes about Soviet cartoons. You sure, this meme is all true. I guess is that no meme is as old as every meme. So, all right. Uh, so I think where's the guy? I think he's up on the bridge. Yeah, I've done something in a bit of a weird order. 
Yeah, he's just chilling on the bridge. Hey kid, me, I'm a Team Rocket member kind of guy. Come from another country. A trainer number one. Me. Think I did. If stop the energy, be big panic for here, people. Secret it is my mission, so tell you I not. But if win you do versus me, a man I be, and mine secret to you I tell. Hey kid, battle begin we do. So, uh, yeah, okay. Now obviously this guy is an important guy. He's got a lot of Pokemon on him. And especially they're very high level. Is this just like a humble flex that I've got like the evolution and it's 12 levels higher than him? Uh, that would have been amazing if that killed him in one go, but sure. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Anyways, uh, Matt, I am not to you. There he goes. So what does he tell you? Okay, tell you mine secret will I. Machine parts steal by me. Hide it I did in gym of the Cerulean. Inside water, put it I did. Look for in water, center of gym at. Boy, but you forget me not. Beat you for sure, will Team Rocket. Come from Jordor, will they? Mine friends, yes, will revenge they are. You say, what, Team Rocket, bye bye a go-go? Broken it is, says you? Oh no, should I do now on from... What? Oh, okay. And he's just gone. As a bit of a humorous situation. He's just there. So... Uh... He's chucked the machine part just there. Uh, it's a key item, so I guess you can't really get rid of it, but sure. Okay. Anyways, now I get to do the wonderful trek all the way back to the power plant. Cool. Sure, but eh. You gotta do it. You gotta do what you gotta do. This is Cronard Schwarzenegger Terminator voice. Uh, he did say he was from another country. He's got that. Uh, that country could be South Korea for all I know, but... <laughs> uh, I'll take it. Does Pokemon acknowledge the fact that it is in Japan? Like, do they do they ever, like, comment on the real countries? Because I know that, like, you know, you'll play, uh, 5th gen and they suddenly take place in a more Americanized area, and then 6th gen is definitely France, and 7th gen is definitely in the Pacific Islands, and 8th gen is definitely in England. 5th gen... It's just kind of like a little bit in between. I think like every other, you know, these original Pokemon generations, uh, they're only the Kanto and the Johto region because there's actually a named Kanto and Johto region in, um, in, uh, Japan, isn't there? And they kind of match the landform, but take a lot of liberties on where all the cities are supposed to be placed. So anyway, ah, yeah, that's the missing part from my beloved generator. My beloved generator. Have a TM. So he gives you that Zap Cannon. TM7 is a Zap Cannon. It's a powerful technique. It's not what anyone would consider accurate, but it packs a wall up. And yeah, that is exactly what Zap Cannon is. It's like, if you didn't care about accuracy, that is a great weapon. Oh, great, great move. Uh, new next gen is gonna be Russia, and whole map is just giant white pixel. Technically, it's the new gen out in the wonderful, uh, like... Scandinavian Wilderness. Isn't that what the, the like, Legends Arceus is going for? I guess I get to bring that one up again, because, like, yeah, it's... No. Where is it? Not Scandinavia? I haven't been looking at it. <laughs> uh, so I could go down and fight a lot of trainers, but I feel like that's not going to be a very eventful, like, end of the stream. And I can come around back for them later. Uh, so I'm gonna go for the gym, and then, uh... I'll probably take me to the end of the, end of the stream. But that'd be good. Anyways, uh, time to put Fluffer out in front, because... Drum roll! It's an water-type gym. We've been waiting for it. By the way, I, I, I mentioned that, um, every gym that you beat, you get a badge. Uh, sorry, every gym that you beat, any move you use using the type of that gym is, uh, I believe, 12.5% stronger than it typically is. All of these gyms... Uh, really? Uh, 
Oh, gosh, the sequence, I tell ya. Hold on. Just chilling up here. Chilling up here again. Oh, yeah, I gotta go look, look at something again. Every gym is personalized. Uh. Oh, personalized isn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I might as well be able to get this, uh. Protein now. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, no, all the, all the Kanto gyms as well count towards, uh, those stat increases. And that's actually something kind of nice, because now I've been this electric gym, and my electric type attacks are really good. <gasps> oh, why did you have to show up and bug us now? Do you know what they, oh, does she go with a valley people, valley person kind of, kind of voice? Uh, Pess, uh, you heard me right, Pess. Now she doesn't say um and what enough. Uh, and like, oh, those badges you have, are they Johto Gym badges? If you have eight, you must be good. Alright, come to Cerulean Gym. I'll be happy to take you on. I'm Missy, the gym leader in Cerulean. See, you uh, taking the long way. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've been playing, um, uh, if there's one thing, I, I did play a little bit more Ace Attorney, because i got a mate who, like, really wants to watch me play it. And, uh, I'm up to... The, the second case of the second game, and there is literally the chick who, like, the writing is, is 100% implying it the valley, the valley girl kind of accent. And, uh, I don't know, man, I, I think I've nailed it pretty alright, so if I ever read that script out, like, you know exactly. I can't do the high voice, that's the one thing. Like, I, I, I can, I, I can do, like, a falsetto, but it just sounds like I'm doing falsetto, and not, like, an actual, like, feminine voice. So maybe, maybe that's the thing, if I ever want to, like, practice VA. Like, I gotta figure out, you know, how- how does the other gender speak? And before you know, I-, I <laughs> the voice cracking falsetto, I'm doing intentionally, don't worry. Uh, so, as the water type gym, this has a lot of water type trainers, and in fact, I don't think- Oh, there's one- there's a couple of curveballs. She's got a couple of curveballs. So there is that. Uh, for now, not as much, and fortunately, no Kingdra. No Kingdra. You, you can safely use electric type attacks for almost the entire gym. And you, can, you can guess who that almost is. I love the swimmers in the middle of the water, just like the, um, the original game. It's just, <laughs> like, oddly, like, out of place. But the best part is that you can legitimately surf across the center and skip them both. I don't think you can skip- actually, maybe you can skip the last person if they don't spin around, but... Uh, there's no point, you might as well fight these people. It's free experience. Here comes Fluffer! Just keeps using Thunder Punch and killing these guys! I guess that's one thing, is that maybe- Maybe in this stream I haven't really been contested as much as, uh... Or challenged as much as the other streams. Um... For reference, the, uh... The very, very late point of the game uh, is uh, pretty much there. There is an ultimate post-game boss, and uh, you will need all 16 badges in order to be given access to this post-game boss. Uh, this post-game boss has a team of high 70s, pretty much. So that's that's the target that you're aiming for. Now, if you're playing hard gold. Goes a little further than that, but I think that's because you've also got some more things to do. So, yeah, that's the goal, is to raise a party that is able to take on a, a team of high 70s. Now, in my first-gen playthrough, which didn't really have much post-game stuff, uh, in fact, there wasn't really any stronger trainers than the gym, um, I don't think I sh Did I show the Professor Oak fight? No, I don't think I did. I showed, I showed one glitch, but I didn't show the Professor Oak fight. Uh, but that's not, that's not a legit, like, intended part of the game, so, yeah. Um, so I guess here's the thing, is that, like, if I fought a team of high, of, like, I guess up to mid-60s, with a team basically, like, the level I am now, then if I want to do high 70s, pretty much need another 15 levels on top of that. So, I need to maybe reach around level 60. Which is going to be a little iffy, because, uh, that's approaching kind of soon. Anyways, uh, I'm feeling confident. I was expecting you, you pest. You may have a lot of Johto gym badges, but you better not take me too lightly. My water type Pokemon are tough. 
They're tough, dang it. Alright. So anyway, this is Misty from Team Magma- wait. <laughs> Uh, so she starts off with a gold egg. It's got Surf, Disable, Psych Up, and Psychic. Uh, I guess he's a bit fast. Uh, so it's gonna be a bit, a bit of a doozy, but not too much of a doozy. Uh, at least I can take it. Yeah, pretty safe. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kill the gold egg. I don't think I am. Woo! Woo! That's not too bad. Alright, now watch, watch who's gonna be next. If you're playing on shift mode, if you're playing on set mode, then this stuff. Quagsire, you gotta watch out and go, oh yeah, grass type. <laughs> I guess I got a grass type, so I can always do a fallback on anything, but. Uh, so Quagsire here has Surf, Amnesia, Earthquake, and Rain Dance. It is almost the same moveset that I use, except I've got Ice Punch instead of Rain Dance, so ha! Uh, Fortunately, that Rain Dance is not here to set up an electric type of- or not to set up a Thunder, anyway, so don't worry. But it is gonna increase the strength of, uh, water type attacks, which is just not- not kind. Uh, she's coming in with Lapras. Uh, we're going back to Fluffer. Alright, so Lapras here is level 44. It knows Surf, Perish Song, Blizzard, and Rain Dance. Uh, remember, water ice type, so, uh, if you've got a fire type, Preferably don't anyways, because Surf, but, uh, I guess there's a few moves you could use. Lampras is definitely bulkier, but apart from the setup, uh, I guess I'm just going to commit to that. Uh, all of these Pokemon know Surf, I've just noticed. I guess it is, Surf is, like, just the water type attack. You can't go any worse than Surf in this game. It's just too good. You're like, you've never seen me use Whirlpool or Waterfall yet, because Surf is just too good. So, last one, we got Starmie. Starmie is a bit on the higher level, level 47. It's uh, Water Psychic, so not that. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't know a Psychic type attack, but it does know Surf, Confuse Ray, Recover, and Ice Beam. Uh, Ice Beam is gonna throw you off a little bit. And also, Starmie is really strong. Just, just no. <laughs> so, I, that is not gonna kill it. Why? Wow! That- I'm amazed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So... Yeah, you can't- you can't send Fluffer out against Quagsire, but apart from that. I'll admit that you are skilled. Here you go, it's the Cascade Badge. Thank you. By the way, now how all these, uh, gym leaders are just giving you badges, like, they don't even give you a TM. They're just gonna say, like, yeah, I mean, there's strong people. I don't know if they're alluding to the TV show on that one. Um... Probably not, considering... Like, <laughs> the TV show definitely considers Misty to be young, but, I mean, here she is dating someone, so, who knows. Yeah, well, I think that's been a pretty solid stream, uh, a bit shy of the two-hour mark, but, hey, that's, uh, three badges, which you can definitely see from this screen, uh, but that's three badges, that's gone around a bunch of places, uh, I've still yet to catch my Lickitung, so I need to, <laughs> I need to double up on that one. But, uh, other than that, yeah, this, can uh, this Kanto part might actually be done a bit quicker than I expect, but that's okay. Well, I'll have a good time while I'm doing it. Anyways, with that, I would like to thank you for watching the stream! If you had a great time watching it, you can feel free to follow on the Twitch or on the YouTube, and there's a VOD. Uh, I noticed before the stream, uh, XTC was playing, uh, sort of Corsa, and I'm like, man, that's hilarious. So, if you're the kind of guy who watched, uh, watched that instead, and you're watching the VOD, I don't blame ya. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, the VOD's there for fun, so, that's all good. Uh, other than that, yeah, I guess, I, I don't know, what, what, what else do you do? I wish I had a SoundCloud so I could be like, and follow my SoundCloud, but that's okay. Uh, other than that, I hope you all have a very fantabulous week up ahead. Uh, if you are playing Forza, then uh, hopefully you'll casually see my name from time to time, because that's how the game works. Uh, but other than that, stay at home, or don't stay at home, or eat your greens, and don't stay up too late. Have a good one, everyone.